Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Deck Builder here with the Brothers War. We're going to open up an Urza's Iron Alliance preview of this kit. And this is going to be used for what we do here called League. So Brother Wars will start a league. How League works is you open up an entire pre-release kit. You build a deck, a 40-card deck, out of the pre-release kit. And then every three losses or... You can actually do it whatever. If we do it, it's called Turbo Leagues for some of them. We might do a Turbo League for a Brothers War because it doesn't last as long as other sets before the next set comes out. So Phyrexia Complete or whatever the other set's called is going to come out in January. Uh, I don't think there'll be enough time to really build up decks for this. So we might do a Turbo League, which means every loss you're able to purchase a pack and add it to your Brothers War pre-release kit. So by the end of the league, you actually have a pretty cool deck built around the mechanics of the set that is currently in our the, the, the latest release set. One of the problems I have with Standard and other formats like Pioneer and Modern is they become solved, they become, or they just, they're just such powerful cards that you're forced to play those cards. Don't get me started on this because it will turn into a rant video, which by the way, there will be a rant video coming up with how much I hate Shieldred. I hate that card with a passion because it was just a mythic that was designed for the, four. I'm just so sick of four drop mythics that we have every set that are just so pushed. We call them like the word salad cards that have just better stats than everything like shoulders of four or five death touch for four mana, which is good by itself. And that's a, that's a very legit card by itself. And then they throw on that static ability of draining life and gaining life every stinking turn. And then it's just such a duck card that every card uh, deck has to include it. And I feel like there are so many interesting cards in standard in fact right now i think is one of the best times for design i want to be grumpy and and whine about the state of standard but the card design is there for these like tier two cards like besides the really super ultra push cards which is very very tough for design team to um like shielded i just think was a duh it was like i think they purposely did that to sell packs i think that was a money grab card they seem to do it every they want like one or two cards to impact other formats like commander or like modern or, or pioneer and so they do that uh, with these chase mythic cards which is just a huge money grab for them to sell packs i get it however a lot of the other cards that sometimes break the format i think the design wasn't meaning for them to break the format they were just missed something like the fable of the mirror breaker um i think that's that's another one that just you know slipped by that they didn't understand was just going to be too powerful for uh the format so anyway what i like about running leagues though is i would say what like 95 percent of cards 90 percent of cards in standard from the late to set aren't going to see play and they are just so fun and flavorable and synergistic that it's just sucks it's just so sad that these cards don't ever get to really see play except for like maybe in drafter and pre-releases but you don't really get to feel like that you get to play with them and that's the whole thing with magic is it's all about creating these you know combos and memories and things that, that you had with these particular cards and if they're just not strong enough for commander or standard well they might as well go in the garbage well, not in this case. In leagues, it's fun. You get to play those cards, those like I said, the, especially the, the tier 1.5, the tier 2 cards, and they end up being really good synergistic, powerful combos in this, and it's a really fun experience. So it's, it's kind of in the middle of being a limited format which of course it is starting off and then but it starts to feel like a constructed format as time goes on and it's super super fun i like it too because it keeps it balanced one of the problems with playing in constructed is you're going to have a wallets so you beat people up with your wallets so this is the 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 one big thing the wallet whoever has the most cash has the better uh ability to build tier decks and just stomp face you know every local game store has one of those guys that will come in week one with the four shieldreds or whatever it is in the latest deck that other people are like oh, i can't afford 200 bucks to you know to, to play in this f and m and there's just a big disadvantage there and then disadvantage number two is the skill level it does vary from player to player like if you sit down and, and even if you're a seasoned player if you sit down with someone like me who's had experience after experience who's been on a pro tour you're already going to be at a massive disadvantage as far as skill is concerned so what i like about how these leagues work is they tend to start to balance themselves out if someone gets like a better pool than someone else they're going to win more and that means they're going to have less cards being added to their pool to work with if they're just a better skilled player well they're going to be able to you know do better at first but then they're going to start to to lose out on the amount of card pool that the other people are going to get from losing so it actually doesn't make it so bad of a feeling when you actually lose a match because uh you get to add a pack 
and you know you get to kind of have that that feeling of collecting that's another thing that's missing right now in my magic the other experience is i think still my favorite time in my life was when i was a kid and that pack that i got from allowance or by saving up lunch money starving myself not eating lunch at school so i could go buy magic the gathering booster packs and that that thrill of opening a pack and knowing that it actually could impact one of my decks was huge now as an adult where i can just buy every card that i want that's not there anymore but this kind of gives that nostalgic experience again of being excited to open up packs super excited to open up packs anyway i've rambled enough what we're going to do is we're going to open this sucker up and we are going to build a 40 card deck with this uh so you get this box here what's cool about these there are dice i think there's three different versions four different versions of dice so there's black red black we've opened up a purple black a green black and a red black and i think there's one more color probably in the, the design. Maybe there's only three, but they're kind of cool. I like this unique design. I hate it when they just do like the same design over and over. as make everyone dizzy as my hands go everywhere. I've had too many energy drinks today. Tell you how to get out all of the Brothers War stuff. Holy cow, it took us hours and hours. Holy cow. All right, so my promo is going to be the Thoran Spider. And so I guess there's not much difference between which one you choose. Yeah, I don't get this with previous kids. You could actually choose Misha versus Urza, but... Maybe the promos are different of what you can get. Maybe it's their particular robots that they use. Some in the comment section tell me how I'm wrong about this. But the Thran Spider, when it enters the battlefield, uh, you and target opponent each create a tapped Power Stone token. So you do get to, your opponent gets to take advantage of that before you do. Keep that in mind. Typically, I don't like those type of cards. Uh, look at the top four cards of your library, and you may build an artifact card from among them and put in your hand put at the bottom. So the, the Power Stone might affect you more than your opponent, but giving your opponent a tapped Power Stone is, is a huge liability. It's ramping them up of an entire turn. So I'm not sure how how i like this card so this is cooler in commander for sure because you can just give opponent this behind a tap kind of make an ally uh there is an arena code for anyone that wants to uh redeem that arena code you are more than welcome to do it get some plus one counters or prototype counters for this one and yep don't know how i feel about this card i probably wouldn't even play it in constructed unless i really was a greedy uh, deck that wanted to utilize mana because even though it is a giant spider for three mana um, you know, it's already discounted right there. Uh, it is very big liability to give your opponent a power stone. All right, so let's go on to the good stuff. All right, so I've now actually looked at this set before. Um, I looked at a couple spoilers here and there, but I really, really don't know what's in the set because so this is going to be new for me. A six mana five five trampler. Uh, I guess plus X special number, number of creatures in your graveyard. It's kind of neat in an aggro deck. A five five trample. I mean, we see this colossal dread maw type card in, in almost every format. It's not quite the six six for six uh, five five, but it does give the plus X plus X. So it's kind of on that ETV trigger can actually in an aggro deck actually uh, doesn't give trample though to the creature that it's it's coming to play. I don't know. Kind of cool card. I don't know if it, if it's a high curve topper. It looks like this figure is a, a reprint. This is absolutely a card that will go in any black deck. Uh, we have the Tokases Onlet, which whenever it leaves the battlefield, you gain two lives. So it does need to die for it to happen. But then you can unearth it. It's an okay two for one ish type card in a mill strategy. This, these are decent because I don't, I would never really want to be paying five for or four just to possibly gain two life. It's kind of weak. But if you just use this as a resource from your graveyard with the unearth, that's definitely worth it. All right, so with the, the Depth Charge Colossus, a 9-9 doesn't untap, 3 to untap it. Uh, that's kind of a cool ability for, you know, uh, future commander decks being able to, to untap it. Uh, and then it has a prototype for 6 mana, so you can be a 6-6 six, six for 6 mana. So uh, pretty decent there. Kind of filler card again. Uh, the Mishra's Domination. It doesn't have Trample either. Yeah, kind of trash card actually for limited. Uh, we have the Mishra's Domination. Uh, enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, otherwise it can't block, so you can put out a creature. These, I actually really like these limited, these like option cards, uh, because they uh, they can easily buff your creature or just make something not block, which is fine. Uh, the Agothian Sprite, put two plus one counters on it for seven, and it can't be blocked by artifact creatures, just a decent filler bear. Bears are always important and limited. Uh, the Astronaut's Intervention, target creature gets plus two, plus two, and when, it, when, it, when this creature dies or is put into the exile from the battlefield, holy cow there's gonna be some broken stuff with this because exile is such a like a cost in a lot of things like exile a certain amount of um cards and stuff so now this is a way to actually get to rip things back out of exile so it's gonna be a very popular commander card for sure um epic confrontation this is a reprint it has fight plus one plus two and fight you used to see a lot of popper play i don't know if it does anymore the aeronauts wing uh equip because you get plus one plus zero and flying equip two i mean this is just basically reprint it doesn't give haste so it's a slightly worse reprint than the the one that came out of Theros, I think. I think it has very similar mana cost. The Swift Gear Drake. So, okay. So, right off, I'm identifying that if there's any sort of artifact removal, it's going to go in your main. 
uh, when you're building decks because there are so many artifacts. Flying Haste for 2-4 enters the battlefield, put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Kind of we very weak stats in my opinion. Uh, lay down arms, Exotar creature with mana value less than or equal number of planes you control is control against three life. This is going to be definitely a standard. Oh, it's a sorcery. Huh. Huh. Pretty neat though. Limited is a little bit harder because it's hard to, to make sure you have you know planes in a two color deck. It might be off curve. The uh, the transmog uh, transmogrant altar. Uh, you can sacrifice a creature for black to add three mana. It's kind of a fixed, and it's got the activated ability. Or you can sacrifice a creature to get a three three colorless zombie artifact creature token. We can only activate it as a sorcery though, so no combat tricks with it. So not bad though. If anything wants to be killed for value, that's a good card. That also works good with their unearth stuff. They unearth it because unearth is what end of uh, beam, yeah, at the X of the beam of next end step. So yeah, that's a uh, something you can then sacrifice your nurse stuff. Uh, the steel exemplar, uh, steel exemplar enters the battlefield with two plus one counters on it, uh, on it unless two or more colors of mana were spent to cast. It's kind of the opposite of last set where it wanted the domain. This does not want domain, so it can come in as a six six trample for five mana. Okay. Uh, then we have the strike, st uh, the strike officer, which is a really good rare in limited. You get a one-one color soldier artifact creature token, and you can tap three soldiers. So you already get one that comes out here. So you just need more soldiers to start drawing cards off of this guy. So super, super good uh, card. The burnish heart, great commander card, decent in standard, uh, or decent in, in limited, and then a power stone token. So lots and lots and lots of artifacts. Looks like we have the green here to kind of support. Uh, the, the Digging Claw, which, uh, equipped two, though. Equipped creatures because plus one was your own menace. Whenever a, a creature enters the battlefield near your graveyard, you may attach it. So you can get plus one, zero, and then it, it enters. I'm going to put this as a black card because it basically is a black card for what it does. The Cavalry enters the battlefield with plus one counter on it, uh, on another target soldier. So soldiers must be a big thing. We're drawing two cards off of this third path wizard. Very filler. Then Misha's Onslaught creates two one, one color soldier tokens there. And then creatures you control get plus two plus zero. So it has this, uh, you can choose one, a pump or more. This is actually kind of cool for a limited strategy, go wide strategy, because when you need the creatures, it's creatures. When you need the buff, it's a buff. And it is instant speed. So I really like this card, actually. Wasteful Harvest, mill five cards, and you put a permanent among them uh, into your hand for three. Instant speed's good. The Locust, uh, Carrion Locust, enters the battlefield, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it's a creature card, put lose a life to one flyer for uh, whopping three mana another human soldier with flying prowess pretty good in our little soldier uh then we have a construct that you can sacrifice uh to draw a card one one for one with an earth actually really like this card really really like this card here with the combat courier the uh, trench stalker if you draw on two or more cards it gains death touch and life linking it's okay uh we have a hastier six four for seven or with its prototype for three and I'll put that in that because it's playable without its colors. Here's another Flying Unearth uh, card, which is pretty decent again for three mana for a 2 1. And then you, you can get at least a little bit of a. Um, yeah. So Unearth can be done. Return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield against Haste Exile. Unearth only is a sorcery. Yeah, yeah. So you have to use it as a combat. Static Net enters the battlefield. Exile target on a permanent and opponent controls until static uh, net leaves the battlefield. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and create a tap power stone token. Okay, so this is actually pretty good uh, because of, I mean, we've seen these these uh, banishing light type cards. It costs one more, so it's very similar, but the gaining two life is very relevant. And um, flickering this sucker is kind of cool too to create power stone tokens. But uh, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't necessarily want to flicker this but you do get value out of the sucker i actually like that card the fall of krug uh you choose an opponent target a tar uh choose target opponent destroy target land that opponent that player controls deals three damage to that player and one damage to each creature so kind of like a sideboard ish cards here yeah land three damage one damage to each creature and then we have the astronaut flesh mechanist astronaut the flesh mechanist so death touch one one for one pretty cool uh attacks you may sacrifice another creature if you do create a tap power so oh, 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 oh. That is pretty good on curve with a two drop that wants to die. I like this card a lot. An exile creature card from your graveyard created tap three three zombie token. Does a lot for just a one mana spell. I really like that card. And we got the Jalem Tome, which is actually pretty decent in limited with draw with draw discard. Uh, so yeah, these kind of cards are, I believe, legal. Yeah, in well, of course they're legal in limited. So it's kind of like the Strixhaven uh, stuff. 
So we have the Survivor of Corliss, first strike. Uh, exile from the gra Graveyard to Scry 2. Good, not a bad little one mana spell on curve with our little soldier thing going. Uh, Counter target spell and tap two creatures. And we have Sibling. Man, this is actually pretty pretty good because this is aggressive. You counter their, their spell, their three drop, and tap two creatures down and then attack in. That's actually pretty good. The Sibling Rivalry, especially if they're stupid enough to play this main phase, like a... I mean, it's, it's pretty good anyway on second main phase, but if they play this on main phase one, try to cast a creature, you counter it, and then you tap down their two attackers. The sibling rivalry, that's what I have with all my siblings. Gain control to our artifact or creatures on turn, untap it against haste, and create a tapped power stone. So again, they're trying to give some value back with it. And I don't know if they've they've uh, if they've underestimated these power stones or how good they're going to get. Because, I mean, we have a lot of mana rocks for three mana to create something. You know, like, like that's the value you're getting like at least two mana you, you got to think of power stone like what's just the the card that comes to play tap for two mana there's a mana rock that does just do that a couple of them, like cold steel heart i mean that can add for any color but power stones i mean you got to think that's like worth two mana so another uh, we've seen this guy we've seen this figure i'm liking blue black right now so far of what the cards that i have why it's pretty decent the onulet uh which we've seen before the weak stone subjugation uh enters the battlefield you may pay three if you do tap and chant permanent and then it doesn't untap for one not bad on curve uh overwhelming remorse this spell costs one less for each creature card in your graveyard and you can exile creature planes or this might actually see like modern play in certain mill self mill strategies this is pretty uh decent yeah this is a great card now i'm really liking black the obliterating bolt though deals two damage to target creature planeswalker but that creature or planes will die this turn exile it so this might just uh uh, sorcery speed but isn't don't we have other cards like this what am i thinking like lava coil does the same thing sorcery doesn't do the exact same thing lava coil does four mana exile i can't remember i can't remember blanched armors reprint pretty cool card the uh, meticulous evacuation return to our permanent to you return target permanent you control the soldier's hand if if it has unearth instead exile then return that card to its hand uh, activate only during your turn. Okay, so you can get back to your, your unearth stuff. You can only activate this during your turn, but you can get value out of it and get more value. Any sort of ETB effect. Now I'm really liking white and blue because we have a way to kind of like flicker some of our stuff that want, has ETB effects. And like I said, now with this other ETB, the, the static neck, uh, you can actually start flickering that to find a better thing to put the static net under. So really like white black at the moment. I mean, blue has that, that absolute bomb, but white black seems to be the best two colors at the moment. Fade from history. Each player who controls an artifact or enchantment creates a 2-2 bear and then destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So at least you get some value out of it. And then, but this great little, I mean, that's a great commander card for sure. Four mana to do that. And we just win the pre-release with the worm coil engine. <laughs> such a busted card and of course we're gonna be able to play it um in any deck so we got the worm coil engine death touch lifelink it does everything you want now we have the yoshin medic with more lifelink and it's a soldier i don't know how we're gonna build this one in these th first three packs i've got some massive massive bombs in it okay we got the power stone fracture so destroy a creature or planeswalker by uh sacrificing an artifact or a creature so very good for those soldier tokens for your power stones. Another black is solid. Uh, the Phalanx Vanguard, another soldier. When it enters the battlefield, your control gets plus one plus zero for an artifact when it enters the battlefield. Uh, we have the Adept again. Nope, we, have, we haven't seen it yet. Whenever you draw your second card, you put a plus one counter on it. A 3 1 Reacher, kind of weird in red. Uh, and a 3 1 Warder, which is pretty decent. Man, this also, this Fade from History is pretty good just in limited because it stores the artifacts. We have the Moment of Defiance, drawing a card for three mana and getting plus two plus one lifelink. Those are pretty good combat tricks and limited. The Fog of War, you gain one life for each creature on the battlefield and prevent all damage will be dealt this turn by creatures power three or less. Good against Go Wide. Energy Refractor draws a card for two mana and add it helps you fix. So this is kind of cool with that flicker stuff. You, you better believe I'm going white black right now. Um, maybe splashing blue, but this is a cool card just to, to flicker back to your hand. Not flicker, bounce back to your hand and replay it and helps fix. So... We got the power. We have the power stone engineer dies. It creates a tap power stone. So like I said, it's something that wants to die. Dang, that's pretty good. Power plant worker gets plus two zero in turn. If you control a creature named mind worker in tower, gets plus two plus one one counters instead. The cradle clear cutter, which adds uh, green equal to its power, um, and it can actually be pumped out for cheaper. The uh, Pyrrhic blast. Sacrifice a creature to do four dam or deal damage equal to, to the creature's power to any target and draw a card. I'm kind of liking our red here too. Uh, the Symmetry Matrix. Whenever a creature with power equal 
to its toughness enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one if you do draw a card. So power and toughness need to be equal. We actually have a lot of stuff that isn't. And this one's kind of weird uh, to get out on turn four. Oh, it wants us to play green, though, to create a bunch of lands. Oh, my gosh. This card's actually good with Awaken the Woods. A lot of 1-1 green Force Dryad land creature tokens that can then tap for mana. And a good old Bone Saw. Pretty aggressive card. Another Power Stone token. So that pack was pretty meh for what we wanted. Now it's now I'm really wanting to go into green. We got some really cool green cards for sure. So here we go. That's what I'm talking about with the main boardable. Disenchant. The animation. Uh, you draw a card when it enters the battlefield and you get enchanted creature and it gets plus it gets 4-4 and it has additions. Good thing to put on like infect cards. Uh, the infantry dies. You create a 1-1 one -one soldier. So soldiers want to be in red as well, huh? A good old Death Toucher. You can just do it for 2 mana. 5-4 Death Touch. So I actually kind of like this card. Just Death Touch is removal. Um, a 3-5 prototype with Reach and Trample or a 10. So pretty decent. Re really good if there's some sort of reanimation to get it out as a 10-10. The Lauren's Escape. So you can give an artifact uh, or creature hexproof and indestructible into unturn and scry one. There's the Mine Worker. So we almost have them all. You gain one life and then you gain three life. You control them all. And the Scrap Work Cohort. Which enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 soldier token again. Nice little soldier. Jeez, I really want to go Esper for sure. The Frexian Rager, or Scrapyard Rager, you draw a card and lose one life and it has unearth. Pretty decent. The Excavation, three power stones and gain three life for five mana. Really want you to ramp into something. Man, I could actually see this see like standard play. So you create three, you get three, and then so next turn be five, six, seven, eight, nine. You could go into a nine drop the next turn if you hit all your land drops. We have the Lauren, Disciple of History. Uh, or another When it enters the battlefield or another legendary creature, you turn to an artifact, carving your grave out of your hand. It's pretty good. Man, another bomb. Another super bomb that we would love to run in. So white, white, definitely playing white. Probably have to play black because black has all of a removal. And so I guess it just depends on what the splash color is after this. Uh, enters the battlefield, choose one, deals one damage to any target. Put a plus one counter on target creature. It gains trample and haste until the turn, so it can actually do itself. Or create a tap power zone. This is a pretty solid card in the green red for sure. A 3 3 um, trample haste uh, until the turn at least. Um, tap power stone to then go into something bigger or one damage. That, yeah, that's a super, super solid card. We have a hostile negotiation. Exile the top three cards of your library in a face down pile. Then exile the top three cards of your. of Okay. If you exile the top three cards of your library in a face down pile, then exile the top three cards of your library in another face down pile. Look at the at the cards in the pile, then turn a pile of your choice face up. An opponent chooses one of those piles, put that pile in your hand, and the other into your graveyard. You lose three life. So you're gonna draw three cards off out of this instant speed. Not bad at all. Oh, Swifties! We got Swifties, which is super powerful and limited. Nice, nice, and a swamp and a regular token. And last but not least, we have coming up here on the Death Charger, the Death Dep Depths Charger. We've seen the sucker before. The Mistress Domination. Well, this is a pack we've seen now. Ah, this is an exact pack we've seen before. Uh, Artifact in the Battlefield gets plus two pursuit. It's a human soldier. So Splashing Blue just for that soldier guy, I think, is worthwhile. And Black is definitely, definitely looking really, really spicy to play. Black White is what I like so far. Um, this can animate your artifacts, though. Kind of cool card. We saw how powerful this was in uh, Kaldheim with animating lands. So animating all your, you know, kind of trash artifacts is good. The uh, splitting the power stone. You have to sacrifice an artifact, but you get to get two power stones. If the sacrifice artifact is legendary, you draw a card. Okay, I guess if you want to sacrifice legendary uh, artifacts like your Jeweled Lotus or something. I guess that's the way to do it. Or Jeweled Lotus is even a legendary artifact. What do you think about the Mox, Mox, whatever? The Mox is. One of the Mox is legendary. Spectrum Sentinel has protection multicolored, which there's like one. <laughs> and whenever non-basic land enters the battlefield under your opponent's control, you game in life. I just kind of like this as a sideboard card in standard, for sure, because there's a lot of way to gain a crap ton of life out of this because things are non-basic. So um, this is actually might make life game viable because it, it curves pretty well within your two drop. You uh, cast your two drop whenever you gain life, or your opponent, you gain life, and then put plus one counter on it. And your opponents are most likely to put non basic lands into play. So it's pretty good. Got the Blast Zone has a reprint, huh? This was at War of the Spark, right? So Blast Zone. And then we have the Thorn of Amethyst of the Amethyst. Non creature spells cost one more to cast. And the Pyric Blast. So this pack didn't give us too much. So, um, yeah, so far, I have to, of course, use a lot of artifacts, but black, black and white seem the most solid. And then. 
so many of the white stuff with soldiers that just splashing this guy just seems like a duh. That's exactly how I'd build this deck. Uh, we aren't very greedy with mana, so like this card is just too much of a liability, I would say. I mean, there are a couple things that maybe we can utilize our mana better with like the Lord Disciple and um, the, the, the Meticulous evac uh, evac Excavation. Meticulous exp Excavation. So possibly maybe the Thran Spider would be worth it. I just hate ramping my opponent up that particular turn. But all in all, I think we had a decent pre-release pool. We got, of course, that bomb and the, the Worm Coil engine. But yeah, uh, this will be fun also to then turn into a league later down the road. We have a lot of stuff to work with. A lot of good green cards as well. Um, green red actually seems pretty decent too. Now I'm thinking about uh, the green red strategy with being pretty aggressive in this format. We don't know how good aggro will do though. It depends on the format. Like in Dominaire, I think aggro is super strong with people going domain. Uh, but in this one, it's not. might not be as strong with a lot of just colorless artifacts that can come out on time and like mana screw not happening as much because that's usually what aggro decks do super good in formats that are typically uh, more prone to mana screw like dominaria was uh, but anyway that'll be fun i'll have to show you the deck when i decide to, to put it all together of what i uh come up with and then maybe periodically i'll check back from time to time to show you how my league has progressed i highly highly encourage you to tell your local game store to, to do league or or if you want to do League yourself with a playgroup, that would be a great segue into joining my Patreon and buying some previous kits directly from me for, for and some prize packs directly from me for at cost so you can kind of be your own store and run your own playgroup. I have a lot of patrons that's what they do. They actually uh, don't have a store in their local area and you know they just get together, pull their funds, you know, buy at distributor cost from me, able to you know, put together these leagues and other fun stuff, playing someone's basement, playing someone's house, whatever they do. And it's a pretty good experience. So, uh, bring the gathering back to manage the gathering. It's still a great game. I, even though I've been doom and gloom with a lot of my videos, yeah. Overprinting is, is a huge issue. Uh, they've done a lot of terrible things to this game in the past year, two years, but it is still an amazing, great game, which is always fun when a new set comes out to build and play around with this. And this is a fun experience. You, you, I mean, don't don't take it from my word. Just play it yourself. See how well you like League. And this is the way, in my opinion, that Magic was meant to be experienced. It was in this more limited environment. And then we have enough cards going to construct it. So limited is this this particular League does that perfectly. By the end of League, you have a pretty powerful deck, in, at least in like the brothers in that set, in, in kind of encapsulated in that set. We've done other Leagues where people didn't add other packs to them. And you end up with a pretty decent deck by the end of it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Kevin with Rogue Deck Builder. Thanks for watching.